Today, I'm going to tell you about a study that we are currently publishing in the Lancet Infectious Disease, where we looked at enhanced performance feedback to nurses and doctors on hand hygiene performance and at patient participation into hand hygiene promotion. Hand hygiene is key to prevent healthcare associated infections. And as we know, maintaining good compliance with hand hygiene is very difficult. To promote hand hygiene, we used in Geneva for more than 20 years the five mode multimodal hand hygiene promotion strategy that has been endorsed by WHO. The candidate promotional strategies were the following Enhanced performance feedback. Perform performance feedback is well recognized. We wanted to use it at a high level. Second, patient participation. It has been tested already, but never in a perfectly controlled study. Patient participation is recommended both by WHO and CDC, and it's a relatively novel intervention. Thus, in our large hospital where we promote hand hygiene using the multimodal strategy since 1995, the study question was, could enhanced performance feedback and or patient participation further improve compliance with hand hygiene among healthcare workers. On the next slide, you see the three arms of the study. One of the arms was the control arm, where we conducted the multimodal promotional strategy as usual. The second arm was the same promotion strategy where we used also enhanced performance feedback to the nurses and physicians in wards. And the third arm of the study was to add to these patient participation, whereby we ask patient to participate and remind healthcare workers about hand hygiene. What about the design of the trial? It was a single center, cluster randomized control study. The population of the study were actually all the healthcare workers and all patients in the randomized wards. Individual feedback was immediate and written by a feedback card that was given to the nurse. Aggregated feedback was actually by ward and department every three months by posters and emails. Here is on this slide the individual feedback cards that was given back to the nurse once she was observed. And here is on this slide an example of aggregated feedback performance to the world. We were using posters that were hanged in the nursing stations where you could see the number of opportunities observed and the compliance of these observation sessions. Here is on the next slide an example of the aggregated performance feedback material that was sent to the units. Speaking of patient participation, we use several tools. We use patient education, we use welcome packs, we use a partnership principle together with the patient. You saw nurses talking to the patients and explaining what was the role of the patient in the promotion of hand hygiene that was expected by the nurses and doctors on the wards. We had badges that healthcare workers were wearing on their gowns to promote patient participation. And finally, we had posters in the clinical zones. On the screen, you could see an example of the card that was distributed to the patient with explanations from the nurses how to understand these cards. There were two major outcome categories in this study. The main outcome, the main study outcome was compliance with hand hygiene. One of the secondary outcome was adherence to WHO moment one for hand hygiene. Another was the consumption of alcohol-based hand rub in the ward where the observations were performed. Let's talk about the results. On the first slide, you will see the study design and the flow chart of the study design. As you can see, we had a total of 112 wards that were screened to participate. Um, 
At time of randomization into the study, one ward had to be excluded because it was becoming a high dependency ward. But then we had three clusters of wards, three study arms. Uh, we had 22 wards assigned to enhance performance feedback and patient participation, 24 assigned to enhance performance feedback, and 21 assigned to standard multimodal promotion. We had no loss to follow up. 12 observers observed actually a total of almost 4,000 healthcare workers for more than 12,000 opportunities for hand hygiene in a total of more than 1,300 observation sessions. So on table two in the paper, what you see is overall hand hygiene compliance in the control enhanced performance feedback and enhanced performance feedback plus patient participation study arms. And as you can see, compliance improved from baseline to intervention. As you can see on the slide too, during the follow-up period, that were the two years after the intervention ended, compliance was maintained at a very high level. In figure 2a, as you can see, overall compliance with hand hygiene increased over the study periods in the three study arms. In figure 2b, you can see that compliance with hand hygiene with moment number one also increased over the study periods during the intervention in the three study arms and was maintained during the follow-up period. One of our secondary outcome was the amount of alcohol-based hand rub that was used in the three study arms over the total duration of the study and it never stopped to increase over time as shown on the slide. In 2009, because of the H1N1 epidemic, there was a boost in the consumption of alcohol that explains probably for what you see on the screen. In conclusion from this study, hand hygiene compliance increased across all study arms over the total duration of the study. As noticed, there was a significant increase in the control group that was due probably to the study effect and also to the fact that control wards also wanted to promote hand hygiene. Among the explanations were that there was staff movement between wards, involvement of department leadership, and exclusion bias. Importantly, neither intervention had a clinically significant effect compared with control, but we defined clinically significant as an increase of more than 15% on hand hygiene compliance, which is very, very high demand. Improvement in control wards might reflect cross-contamination of an effective intervention, and this highlights challenges with randomized trials testing component of behavior change. This study calls for more research in the field of hand hygiene and also in the patient participation aspect of promoting hand hygiene as well as the importance of enhanced performance feedback. I will only encourage all of you to read the paper, access the material, ask questions if you like, and I would like to thank all healthcare workers uh, in Geneva for their participation to the study as well as to the team in infection control. Thank you very much.